everyone it is july and you know what that means it is time for anthracon i'm here in pittsburgh here at the david lawrence uh, center um and i am operating off a different camera i'm using a uh, vivitar um, action cam so i apologize if um my camera frame see i'm a bit wonky uh plus i don't have have the same zooming capabilities um, as you can see around here, uh, the halls are a little bit empty, but within the next uh, few days, these halls will be filled up. Um, so we will, um, uh, well, we actually got uh, started with the uh, registration. Um, as you know, um, guest of honor uh, Jim Cummings will be here. Um, uh, we'll be um, seeing him um, starting tomorrow. Uh, but for today, uh, we'll have our uh, mixer where it'll just be random stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, this is a bar from across uh, the Westin. One of the most popular places, Tonic. Now, look at one of their drinks. Yip me very hard. I never thought of this we actually use the word yip. Yip me very hard. It's very good Flying Tiger. That is. I cannot believe I'm saying this in front of a bartender. <laughs> Give me very hard. <laughs> Get me out of here. Keep your head in that drink. That's what I am. We have to see how this is. Uh, this is a raspberry Wait, vodka and woodchuck cider. We'll see how this turns out. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, look, it's like three inches wide. <laughs> the largest camera, not really, not that large. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you got this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for those of you that, that are watching my video right now, this is like three inches wide compared to this thing. Yay. <laughs> Bigger. Yeah, I am so cheap. It's bigger. <laughs> Granddaughter. I really want to start making my 
Opening ceremony is over. Now starts the migration to the dealer's den. That's it. 
about it. Of course. Oh, yes. Hey, wait a minute. You're not, too. Actually, that's DJ Ear. Well, uh, two ran off to go to a panel with Electro Trencer. Um, I don't know how long it runs for, but he will be narrating. Oh, you're selling bootlegs now? It's actually a bootleg of his own stuff. <laughs> yeah, like, he, he, he went and found, like, some old box that had a bunch of old recordings of him, like, the first ten years of his, of his stand-up stuff. And wow. so he put it all together onto a DVD. Wow. <laughs> Pretty cool. Hey, what'd you think? <laughs> of course, I had to get telephone. <laughs> Norm! Norm! No, so can I get a picture with you? <laughs> My oh, favorite superhero wolf. Giant donut. Oh, that's a sky cam. Interesting.
Guys, this is what drones are made for. Birds, birds, and more birds, which means it can only mean our charity, the National Aviary here at Pittsburgh. So I see you got uh, birds uh, that it's called African penguin, Eurasian eagle. Al, uh, so, so you get uh, birds from all over the world. Is that is that it? Yeah, we get a lot of exotic birds and some are on species survival programs. So we are helping to like repopulate them in the wild. Are you from Pittsburgh? I, I'm from North Carolina. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you wanted to come visit, we have little maps and things and discount coupons. <laughs> <laughs> Are you from that? Are you east or west? Are you east or west? Uh, I'm eastern. Oh, okay. So you yeah, yeah uh, I do know that there, there's one that, uh, one place that we helped. Uh, it's somewhere between uh, Greensboro and Raleigh, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Alrighty then. Excellent. I think I should tell my viewers about uh, Adopt a Bird here. $25 uh, to adopt one of these birds. You got a choice of African penguin, bald eagle, or Eurasian eagle owl. And you will receive a adoption certificate, a photo, and a fact sheet. Uh, is there anything else you want to tell the viewers? So, uh, we'd be happy to have you come visit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Nicely done. Uh, uh, right? Okay, first, I didn't wear the jacket for nothing. I wore it for $19.50. <laughs> if you think I'm kidding, I'll show you the receipt. Uh, everybody, I'm sure you're aware, uh, we have two great guests of honor, both Mr. Jim Cummings, he's probably, uh, I think the nickname for you is Mr. Disney Afternoon. Yeah. Among other things, but you, you, you a few other nicknames. Few other nicknames <laughs> but that's that's a good one. Um, North is uh, one of our assistant directors here. He's going to be field, helping to field questions for Mr. Cummings. So, uh, do all of you have questions or things you'd like to hear? Yeah. Yep. Answer. Okay. So, North is going to go ahead and help Jim out. So, do you have anything you'd like to say to all these fine folks? Yes. Has anybody got a bottled water? Just kidding. Oh, no, I'm kidding. But uh, anyway, hi. Hello. <laughs> I'll say hi and things like that. So uh, thanks for inviting me out to play. And meanwhile, here's North, apparently. Yeah. Well, I See? have some questions here, too, because I'm sure the audience didn't think of it. Oh, you do have some questions? Do. Any questions? I started uh, knowingly at the age of four, but I kind of did. I just 
by being an obnoxious child. Can't, I don't recommend it, but <coughs> but uh, but it uh, worked out. But I, you know, I was always in plays as a kid. I was uh, I was born in Youngstown, Ohio, not too far, and uh, I was always in plays. You know, like I say, I'd be 12 years old, but I'd want to go be the ogre or the wizard instead of the, the 12 year old prince because it was more of a stretch and it was just more fun and, and you know bad guys seemed to have had, had a pretty good time and uh, and the prince was always like oh sure no problem uh, let somebody else do that you know I'll uh, be casting a spell on him to turn him into a weasel it was more fun so I accidentally was uh, doing kind of research for uh, uh, my career you know as it turned out and then then in high school uh on speech team, did all that stuff, and always knew that I would be either something in the arts, uh, I uh, paint for a living, paint pictures for a living, which I did for a little while, I painted murals and uh, Mardi Gras floats and designed them in New Orleans for a few years, and I uh, always wanted to, uh, believe it or not, be a deckhand on a riverboat and a drummer in a strip joint on Bourbon Street, but I, so like I say, in the arts, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know. Okay, maybe not dancing. You don't know. Nobody wants to see me dance, uh, including me. Uh, but uh, you know, music and singing, acting, you know, painting that 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 was working for me. I I, I uh, I'm no good at punching time cards or getting letters after my name, apparently. But uh, on the other hand, I get to hang out with you guys. But uh, you know, in in '84, I made my first demo tape, which I guess you know, for a voice actor. I mean, you know, you said voice actors, blah, 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 I do voices. Well, the thing is, you're a character actor. Uh, you know, you're just, re we're all character actors, guys like myself and, and uh, Rob Paulson, uh, Jess Harnell, or, you know, Frank Walker, uh, Tara Strong, all our buddies. We, you know, we're all character actors, really, uh, who just, uh, well, you don't see us, so that's, that helps. It keeps us out of <laughs> makeup uh, a lot. And you don't have to worry about lighting. And, um, and uh, it, but, you know, it's, it's just all done with the voice. You know, we, we have character actors who have characters who have interesting voices. And, uh, and it just comes across that way. And I always joke around, I've been nominated for an Emmy five times, and, I've, you know, I've, I'm 0 for 5, but I, my joke is that oh, anybody can win, win an Emmy if they get to use their face. <laughs> 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 uh, but uh, but uh, how, how do you it, find it? It just works, you know. Well, uh, for me, you know, they, they'll bring it to you. They'll, they'll, it, it's always good to get a picture, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, the producer, the creator, the director, they'll, they'll be saying, well, you know, this guy's very timid or he's very shy and, or else he's big and boisterous and, you know, and you just sort of adjust. Aim your aim and fire and keep firing until they go, oh, okay, that stinks, that stinks. Oh, that's pretty good. You stop it, that's pretty good. And then you try to get, get that better. And, uh... So, made a demo tape, shopped it around, and I accidentally got my first job I auditioned for uh, on my day off. It was D Dumbo Circus. There were, cable TV was just breaking, and that, that apparently Disney Channel was uh, gearing up. Uh, apparently, they've done well with it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> those kids, I'll tell you. Uh, and I was uh, lying on the lion on Dumbo Circus. It, wa it wasn't animation, but it was... The folks in the animatronic uh, costumes with the with the eyes that, that bulged and did all this weird stuff, and so that was my intro. and And I didn't know that it was impossible to break into. So fortunately, I was you know ignorance was bliss, uh, and I'm still blissful. <laughs> and uh, so one thing led to another, and then I got an agent, and I uh, I think I I lucked out as timing wise because uh, at that point. You know, Disney Afternoon was gearing up, and there was a lot of shows breaking, and uh, American Animation was percolating away, and uh, I, I, I was there at, at a nice time, and uh, all the things that used to get me kicked out of class worked out, you know, so I get to come hang out with you guys, you know, and so uh, so that that was kind of how I started, you know, but th there's, a, you know, there's no formula, though. 
friend Frank Welker, they, they got him first, and uh, he's, uh, Frank is an amazing guy. Uh, he, he doesn't, he's not very much for publicity. He doesn't do a lot of, you know, signing or, you know, anything like that, but he's just the greatest guy in the world, and, and you know, Frank's the kind of guy that, I mean, he was Slimer, uh, he, he, he was Cujo uh, in the uh, Stephen King movie, like, God, 25 years ago. I mean, if, you know, if you need a Martian snail from the south side of Chicago, <laughs> Frank's the guy. Well, they, I, I guess they, uh, they tapped him, and, and, and he just wasn't comfortable with it. He says, you know, what's it called? Disney, you know, he's, he's crazy. <laughs> and, uh, and apparently he was right, and, and I am. And, uh, and the way that we did Ed, it was very different. Well, they, they knew what they wanted with Ed. They wanted one wise guy, one Weisenheimer gal, you know, whoopee and cheek. And then uh, one guy who really didn't say anything, but who packed a lot of emotion and a lot of bodaciousness. And, and, they, and they, they are laughing hyenas, so you got to laugh, uh, even when nothing's funny. So uh, we're sitting around trying to, they, they didn't know what to do with him, you know, for Lion King and, and uh, Rob, uh, uh, and uh, Rob Minkoff, Don Hahn, Roger Allers. And they're going, well, here, here, let's do this. So they got a legal pad, and they go, here, write this down, write down uh, anger.
was the hardest voice that you ever had to do? Oh boy. Um, well, Taz is up there. Um, it's what well, we were doing. We did like, uh, gosh, uh, 120 something, uh, uh, 11 minute uh, Taz radio shows, and I would always ask him to do it on a Friday afternoon, so I had the weekend to heal, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it, you want to tell them about it? Because I can't. It, it just hurts. Uh, I'm kidding. It's my show. <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm kidding. No. But it was a, like an industrial strength press, wasn't it? Like a dry cleaning plant? It was sucking people. Yeah, it was sucking people. I'm going, unplug it. Movie's <laughs> over. <laughs> it wasn't Christine. Don't, I mean, Christine could give drive after you. It was a 57 Chevy, wasn't it, right? It could drive well, after you. Chase you down the alley and kill you. This thing is a big giant industrial pressing plant from the Industrial Revolution, and it was like in a dry cleaning factory. And it was called the Mangler, anyway. Long story short, really short. It was called the Mangler, and they wanted, and it was Tobe Hooper, who was kind of a cool dude, made uh, a lot of uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and a bunch of kind of cool horror films. Mm, not this one. <laughs> and, uh, and, and it was a layered sound. They wanted some sound, but the thing didn't have any mouth, so it had to be like drones, and it was... <laughs> and, then, and then another one. <laughs> and then they mixed them together and then did them backwards, and it was like, oh, man. Sounds like, you know, the digestion system of a Tyrannosaurus or something. <laughs> and, uh, and that was the worst and the hardest. And the least rewarding. Uh, <laughs> I was so happy they actually misspelled my name in the credits. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the Garbage Pail Kids movie. <laughs> I made them pay me. I know, but wasn't there any point that when you just started, it was like, I don't want to be part of I think the sewage pail kids were busy that day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
No, I can't. Thanks. Now I'm <laughs> probably sit here and think about it. Now I can't get out of bed tomorrow. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. 
Yes, yes. I'm a one. You guys are all twos now. Ah. Uh. <laughs> kind of this side of the room this time. Um, how about you, sort of white shirt and wet? Yes. Uh, I'm kind of glad you brought up Darkwing Duck. Uh, I'm a fan of the show. Um, now, when he makes his entrance, he always throws up a random line. Um, where do they usually come from? And, um, and oh, um, oh, I uh, forgot what the other one was. Oh, um. Drake Mallard. Yes. <laughs> and um, and um, what was your favorite random line uh, when he makes his entrance? Oh gosh. So the questions about Darkwing Duck and his crazy yeah. two-liners to start to start the, the program. Yeah, it would. Uh, he would always uh, the first and the last one would always be the same. I am the terror that flaps in the night, and then I am Darkwing Duck, and I would just make something up. <laughs> I read it out on the spot every day. <laughs> you know, it was because uh, they would write stuff and, and they go, it, it would be, I am the terror that flaps in the night. Jim will probably make something up.
Yes, we have trucks. We got two 16 foot trucks. They're dock height and they have lift gates. So, uh, I, great, wonderful. You're our man. We're going to drive back to the trucks. We're going to get the stuff. We're going to roll the things onto them. We're going to come here to the David L. Lawrence Convention Center. We're going to offload it. Everybody will be happy and we'll be on time. We got to the trucking place. The first thing I noticed was the gentleman who owns it is a midget. <laughs> I'm sorry, a, a, a little person. I apologize. That's a very dreadful thing to say. But you see, his dock is here. My dock is here. That, that's the problem. Dock height? Okay, I just didn't tell him what kind of dock. I meant like a real world dock. An actual dock that exists here, not in Narnia. <laughs> we made a good game of it. We, we tried to, to roll the pallet jacks onto the basically, it basically this kind of way, boom, and stop. <laughs> While the stuff crew were busily unpacking the pallets to repack them on the truck, down that 10 inches, I went into the office. This is the store express up in Denton. There's a lovely lady named Jen. I said, Jen, quick, get on the intertubes there. I need the telephone number for U-Line Corporation, there, our industrial supply. I called them up, and the lady answered, I said, hi, I'm going to buy a forklift. How much? She said, $30,000. 30000 Oh. I don't want that forklift. Do you have, do you have, do you have like, like, you know, like, like my first forklift, Fisher Price forklift? Tonka, or I, I just need a, like a little forklift. What's a thing you do? Kids, little rattles and lift its forks up. And she said, Yes, we do. I said, What's it look like? She said, Well, it's, it's got forks. They go up and down. And I said, oh, wait, 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 uh, Jen, Jen, on that webpage, hang on, now, get, listen, um, we're on your webpage, what's the, what's the, what's the product number of, of the forklift? And she said, okay, hang on, uh, Jen, put in H, H243-7, okay, and this picture came up, it, it, it's your price forklift, it, it's, it's a little tiny baby thing, and I said, yes, yes, that, that, I want that, I want to have sex with that, right now. <laughs> I said, not you, the forklift. <laughs> not that I wouldn't, but it's... I got a thing. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's adorable. And it was cheap. Relatively cheap. Fairly inexpensive. So I, I said, send me one. I want, I want it here before we pack back up. And I, I went out and I shouted to the stuff guy. I said, hey, Talon, Talon, I just bought a forklift. That's kind of what he said. He said, dude, what? I said, never mind. I'll just, you're going to like it when we go to pack up. It's cute. Real mini forklift. I'm going to name it Klaus. <laughs> Klaus the forklift. Oh, yeah. I, I know what that's a reference to. So, yes, challenge is this, David. North Carolina is a fine state. They're fine and agreeable. But as I said, they do do things differently down there. Some of the Triangle Furs, Koku and some of his buddies down there, they, they found out he was living there, they came to my house and said, Uncle Kage, uh, we found a sake bar down here. And I said, oh, tell me more. Because <laughs> they know I love sake. Sake is Japanese rice wine, those who don't know that. So uh, I said, where is this sake bar? And they said, oh, it's this, this lovely place over there. We want to take you. And I said, are you buying? They said, yeah. I said, let's go. <laughs> we went to the side. Oh, somebody screwed my chair down there. <laughs> we had enough to do that there, son. <laughs> Stay. So, went for sake bar. Now, all of the stories I tell are true. I do not have to make stuff up. There's plenty of people in here who have witnessed these stories, and they will tell you that they happened exactly the way I tell them. My stories are certified 105% true. Plus or minus. Yeah.
We went to the sake bar, and we went in, nice Asian-looking place, and uh, this very, very Asian-looking gentleman comes up. <laughs> with his, careful Fox, with his silk shirt, <laughs> dragons on him, and he walked up and said, how y'all doing? <laughs> I said, we're just fine, Jim. <laughs> uh, so he sat us down and I said, say, Jim, tell me what kind of sake you have. He said, we got hot and cold. <laughs> I looked over and told him. Okay, Jim, let's, uh, let, let, okay, let me put this another way. What kind of sake, you know, what brewery, where, where, where is it from? He said, well, let me get the menu, I'll show you. So he went off, I looked over again, the purple and the They weren't looking at me, they were just kind of staring at Jim. <laughs> Jim comes back to the menu, I looked at it, I looked at it. Over again at the bar. They had three rot gut, take the pain off your power sockets from California, and one middling grade, not terribly bad, won't really give you, you know, horrible gout or anything like that. It, it's an okay Japanese sake. But then this was their top shelf, own more amazing, top of the line sake. So I said, all right, bring your top shelf stuff. And old Jim went away, and I uh, saw that he went back up. No, I'm just He's a scoff, he's not the I'm perfectly fine with the walk over. I was talking to the fellas over the corner of my eye, and I saw Jim come over, and he had a bottle, and he put the glass down, and something did not seem right. And I looked over, and as Jim was about to pour my sake, I saw there was a cucumber sticking out of the glass. <laughs> And I said, stop. What's that? <laughs> and Jim said, that's a cucumber. <laughs> Jim said, that's a cucumber. I said, I can see that. What's it doing in my sake glass? And he said, don't you want it? <laughs> I said, okay, Jim, let me, uh, let me, okay, I, I, want you, I want you to picture this, right? Picture, if you will. I walk in, in a nice tuxedo, into the fanciest French restaurants in New York, and I say, good morning, garçon, my usual table here. Would you kindly bring along, please, a glass of saint in the eye, 2001. Oh, and would you be kind enough to put a dead trout in it for me? <laughs> Maybe strain it to an old jock strap. <laughs> no, I don't want a goddamn cucumber. Get it out of there! <laughs> <laughs> and they just kept staring at me. <laughs> now, bless their hearts, I mean, they, they meant well, and I'm not going to hold them at fault, but uh, uh, cultural differences abound between a Yankee boy like me and the South. It wasn't all bad, though, because one thing I was looking forward to was my tax return. Yeah, yeah, I know. Y'all gave these answers. <laughs> All right, he's passing the mic. <laughs> All right, so let's grab this card and start the party. All right, so are we starting on the left or the right this time? Beans, these guys want to start with them, right? The, the next person. Next person. All right. So, what's your name again? Mentova and Mentova and Elliot. When we win, okay. we're gonna go out to the beach. We're gonna buy a fancy house. We're gonna sit outside on the deck, and we're gonna sit fine pinion on Grigio and look off at the sunset and say, man. <laughs> Why? Anyway, all right, 
ladies and gentlemen. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna ask this question. I wanna see a hand paw or whatever you guys okay. are on the buzzer. Besides artwork. Oh Jesus. Uh oh. Besides artwork, name something that furries are known for. Yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> Try for it. I'm gonna come over there. I'm a penguin. I'm a penguin. Fight, 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 fight. Anyway, all right. So let me get this to him because I don't remember this rule. If he doesn't, if we don't get the first answer, then they get a try. If he doesn't get the first answer, the other team gets one shot. All right, well, then I'm going to have to hear your reply to this terrible question. Besides artwork, name something that the furry fandom is famous for. Fursuiting. Fursuiting. There it is. Pass the play. They're going to play again. Good job, man. Yeah, okay. Last time I checked, there's still a day of Anthrocon left. Don't jinx it. That's true. All right. All right, Magnus. Besides artwork, name something furries are known for. Uh, well, uh, inappropriate social behavior. Inappropriate social behavior? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Satan, do we have inappropriate social behavior? Would any of us actually admit to that? You don't have to admit it. You asked us on that bag. People are not ashamed. Thank you. Let me see. Oh. I touch myself. Thank you. We don't want to know that. We don't want to know that. Yeah, we're going to give it to you. Survey says... Drama. I feel as though that's close enough. It's spiced up a little bit. All right. Bass, name, besides artwork, name something for us to know for. Raving. Raving. Good answer. Good answer. Woo! Survey says... <laughs> the last one on the board. <laughs> Anybody with one dollar bills, get up here now. <laughs> Continue. Oh, look, he's going to do it, too. Besides artwork, 
name something birds are known for? Writing. 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 Is. This is sad. You're just mad because we're kicking your ass. Get tub nuts! <laughs> Megan, besides our word, name something furries are known for. Okay, uh, crafting. 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 Satan! Where'd you go? I'm coming back, don't worry. Don't worry. Crafting survey says balls. All right, no strikes. Don't take that too literally. No strikes. Three answers remain. Besides artwork, name something furries are known for. Yeah. Oh, they're Alright, Kane Kellerman. Uh, this is a 
one chance at retribution. Okay, you need to put your you need to put your fucking butt back in the chair because you're trying to win. Are you ready? We have two answers on the board. One of which, or two of which, might lead us to the scoreboard for once in our freaking lives. <laughs> so, your name was what again? Lenari. Lenari. Name something other than artwork that furries are well known for. Plushies. So we got plushies on the board. some of the items we have for auction. We got um, this production cell of uh, Ripster from Street Shark. Uh, we got these uh, big uh, fursuit badges. One of them has macro and the other one is number 10,000. I saw someone walking around with a uh, 1 million one. Uh, we got a, a Griffin uh, fursuit head. Let's see. Oh, here's a good one. Um, we got um, the Omni, the Weston, and the Courtyard um, giving uh, four nights um, for at their hotels for 2015. All the uh, rooms and taxes will be paid for, and the lowest guest room floor guaranteed uh, for the Weston. Um, we also have. Uh, another first you tag number 1300 and by the way we did reach um, 1326 first suitors in the parade um, let's see oh the uh, National Aviary is going to give um, a uh, VIF experience which is very important furry they'll be doing a behind-the-scenes experience at the National Aviary and uh, there's also a falconry experience for four guests and here's one that caught my attention. This is the Anthrocon Golden Ticket. What this is, is that next year, if you hold this badge, you'll get to the front of all elevator lines, no matter what. Uh, we got some plushies here. Uh, what I've been talking about, Rocket Raccoon. We got some tiger plushes and this very big bear plush. All right, let's go to the um, raffles to see what we got. We got some items. Um, we got a we got a flask here. Uh, let me see, what is this? Oh, no, this is a bag. Okay. Uh, let's see what else we got here. A couple of pictures here. Some derpy stuff. There's a, a toothless uh, build a bear plush, and that's also up for the raffle. More MLP stuff. I think I went to uh, Octavia. There's a DJ Hero 2 game for Xbox 360 that's on the raffle. And look at this someone is giving away a Commodore Vic 20. Very old game system. 
Oh, and um, the Doubletree is also um, doing four nights pay, but they're going to do theirs in the raffle. And look at their stack. Full of tickets. Someone's going to have to be pretty lucky on that one. And someone just gave away these Old Spice deodorant. And for good reason, they are all uh, animal themed. Uh, we have Danger Mouse, the complete series. And here's, a, here's an old one, Sherlock Hound. A um, friend of mine has already shown me a few episodes, actually pretty uh, entertaining. Uh, more fursuit badges, we have badge number 69. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and make your joke. Um, badge number 366. I'll let you decide what reference that is. And finally, number 420. And let's see what we got. Uh, this, uh, it, it, oh, this is one of those uh, Russian nesting dolls. More plushies over here. We got some old PlayStation games. I think I remember playing this one, Vigilante 8. A very old game. Uh, so, um... So, uh, that's pretty much everything that is in the raffle. And of course, they're giving away the tickets for Two and Kage. Um, but unfortunately, I will not be recording that show because... This is for charity, guys. If you want to see that show, you gotta pay for that. Um, all right. Anyway, um, yeah, to the Rancy Griffin is tonight. I will be getting a little bit of footage over there. Uh, let's see. So we're gonna go ahead and more exploring. I'll see you guys a little later. Some perfectly adorable kittens. 
And that way all the people who are going to get offended go, aw, hey, aw. <laughs> and I don't get in trouble. It's like, a, it's like a Twitter Jedi mind trick. This is not the tweet your butt heard about. And it worked. <laughs> I like to call it the adorable kitten sandwich technique. <laughs> so, so I figured that tonight for the show, if telephone came out first, <laughs> oh, and uh, then she comes out again at the end of the show, then we can just be all part of this wonderful, adorable telephone sandwich with just some shit in the middle. <laughs> I'm gonna move this over here. Watch as I do this. Did you see that? <laughs> and to think I did all the work writing the show and all I had to do was to move shit around. <laughs> I've noticed um, a lot of newcomers this here this week. Oh, by the way, hello, Philadelphia. Forgot that. Hello, Pittsburgh. I said Philadelphia. Right here. Hello, Pittsburgh. How are you doing? Hi. Hi. Totally forgot to say, hi, how are you guys doing? Um, everybody not in fursuit, say, yay! Yay! Now, everybody just in fursuit, say, yay! Yay! <laughs> I love that, I can't get over that. It's like, everybody, yay! Fursuit, boo! <laughs> <laughs> I have noticed that there, uh, there, there are some newcomers here this year. Great to see you, good to have you. Um, if this is your first uh, a few I have a few guidelines for you to follow. First, if you are in an elevator or a stairwell and you begin to choke on some kind of deadly gas, <laughs> don't panic, it's not a terrorist attack. This is just the way we like to man up the place. <laughs> Mark your territory. And when somebody comes in those front doors, we want to be able to slap them with our balls from 30 feet away. <laughs> Second, um, if a fursuiter approaches you and says, it's dangerous to go alone, they actually are about to give you a sword. <laughs> it's not the kind you're thinking they're going. <laughs> My suggestion if they chase you is to actually run down some stairs. <laughs> First shooters falling downstairs is the most adorable death ever. <laughs> uh, third, third, um, if you are in a room party and you either fall asleep or pass out, um, you then become what uh, us furries refer to as a CWH or a collection of warm holes. <laughs> You cannot get the full furry experience unless you've done this at least once. <laughs> if you don't walk out of here Monday without feeling like you know a train wrecked across all of your junk, <laughs> then you did it wrong and you don't get your furry license. <laughs> and finally, number four, if by the end of the weekend you feel a little bit sick or have a painful rash in a sensitive area, don't worry about that. That's just God telling you that he's down, turned his back on you, and you're going to be going to hell with the rest of us. <laughs> Welcome to the world. <laughs> oh, also, uh, dealers. Dealers, if uh, you're new to the dealers in here, um, I have some info for you. Uh, obviously, huge place, right? So, um, Anthrocon has to work with the union to help get things done. And the way I understand it is that <clears throat> anything that you can, any work you can do with your hands, that's fine. But the minute you actually have to pick up a tool, you have to call in a union member to help you out. Uh, this means, of course, that uh, the union will have to be involved in most of the sex going on this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys bringing power tools in here. And you ain't here to build birdhouses, neither. <laughs> Jackhammers with replicas of Andre the Giant's fist on the end. <laughs> Only two purposes for that. Either completely wrecking a CWH, or punching some dumb bastard 140 times a second. <laughs> and unfortunately, the governor of Arizona is nowhere near here. So, oops. Did I see? Lots of fans of the governor of Arizona here. <laughs> they step over a line. <laughs> Oops. Uh, of course.
course, I'm joking. I'm joking, of course. I know. Sure you are. The balcony. Good stuff. One person out there knows what balcony is. It's probably Fox and more. Terrible damage. Terrible damage. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. You're not mad at me. No. <laughs> can, can, can you say good night to all these good people? It's, it's video, by the way. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, <laughs>
toilet. I love it. You gotta see the stuff that took me on the way from Georgia. We were in this like little shacky ass restaurant, and there's a mirror in front of the toilet. Like, why do I want to wash my toilet? I am. There's a mirror right in front of the toilet. It's reminding you of your shame. It's like you went shot fast and played with a pencil. Tell me what the score is. Worst state ever.
so lovely. So Hey guys, um, Sunday, uh, well, it, technically it's Monday now. Um, so it is now um, the end of Anthrocon 2014. Um, so uh, I am standing here, one of my favorite corners, uh, Penn and 10th. Uh, for a particular reason. And it's because these, uh, the sign actually talks and tells you to walk like a dog. Um, so yeah, um, so some closing statements before I end this video. Um, as always, Pittsburgh is fantastic. Um, you guys welcome us with open arms, and I always look forward to coming here every single year. Um, and especially with this being, um, uh, I, this is my seventh, seven years already? Wow, I've been here... <laughs> quite a while now. Um, so, um, so yeah, uh, many thanks to the people of Pittsburgh. I really love you guys. Um, um, obviously the hotel staff, they've been very helpful. Um, con staff um, and the door side. Uh, let's see. And um, especially to everyone uh, who attended here um, at Anthrocon. Um, as far as my next uh, convention, I am not sure yet. Um, I do plan to go to uh, Midwest Fur Fest. So, um, other than that, I don't think I have anything else to say. Oh, and by the way, that surprise I, uh, that I was keeping, well, here's some footage. Yay, it's HD video. Man, I can think of places to use this camera. Oh, you got to get a straw in my ear. Thank you. Totally photo bombing your picture right now. Hi. Hi. Five. Oh my God. I'm Second floor. Oh, that's what it is. I'm like, careful. What the that's the door that's open. Oh, I know. Okay. Brawl. Everybody out.